Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and have watched my previous video in which I discussed the working of a gyroscope. In this particular video, I am going to talk about another interesting sensor which is called moisture sensor. Before talking about moisture sensor, let me clarify that what moisture is. Simply stated, moisture is the amount of water content present in any object and this amount of water is something that dictates the overall properties of the object. There are a number of examples where amount of water or the moisture in any object should be monitored and kept at particular levels so that we can achieve the desired physical properties and storage stability. Let me give a very simple example that will clarify that what moisture is and why we need to measure and control it. All of you must have used or at least heard about dried milk. Ideally, what is dried milk? Simply stated, if you remove the water content from the milk, you will be left with powders and minerals only. You must also know that simple milk in liquid form can expire in a matter of few days if not properly sealed and even if you seal it, the expiry time doesn't extend beyond few months. Moreover, the milk in liquid form is heavier and occupies more storage space as compared to dried milk. The only difference between the liquid form of milk and the dried milk is that the water contents or the moisture has been completely removed from the liquid milk to get the dried milk. In comparison to liquid milk, dried milk has a shelf life of more than a few years if it is kept properly sealed and even if it is opened, it can remain usable for a number of weeks. Furthermore, you can easily package the dried milk in small containers that will take much less space than the packs of liquid milk. Moreover, there are a number of examples where moisture contents are sometimes removed or sometimes added to get the desired physical and storage properties of certain solids, liquids and even gases. Not just in everyday life, but this thing is equally applicable in industrial settings as well. Moreover, not just the physical and storage properties are of concern, but moisture contents are limited in the products that are sold by weight. Because if they have more than the required moisture in them, of course their weight is going to rise and the customers will definitely get less quantity of what they wanted and more quantity of water. Therefore, moisture control in industries related to foodstuffs, pharmaceuticals, cement, plastics, textiles and paper manufacturing is of prime importance. But definitely for controlling moisture, the first thing is we need to measure it. Before talking about any device or method used for the measurement of moisture content present in any object, let me give you one last example where moisture is of particular interest. The most common thing related to moisture content which we hear quite often is humidity. Humidity is nothing but the amount of water content or moisture content present in air. Measuring and controlling the humidity in the environment, especially in closed buildings and in greenhouses, is quite important for maintaining a comfortable environment. Normally, there are three different terms associated with humidity levels. First one is the absolute humidity, which is the mass of water in a unit volume of air. Second one is the specific humidity, which represents the mass of water present in a unit mass of air. And lastly, the term that we hear the most is relative humidity and it is defined as the ratio of the actual water vapor pressure in air to the saturation vapor pressure and is normally represented as a percentage. In simple words, the actual water vapor pressure in the air means the water vapors present in the air, whereas the saturation vapor pressure means the maximum water vapors that can be held by the air at a particular temperature. If you increase the water vapors beyond the saturation point, the air will not be able to hold more water and hence the water will condense. Therefore, the relative humidity will tell us how much more water vapors can be stored in the air in form of moisture. A relative humidity of 100% will mean that no more water vapors can be held by the air. Whereas 50% would mean the capacity of air to hold water vapors has been consumed by half. So now that we have a clear understanding that what is moisture and where we have experienced this thing, 
we can move on to the methods and devices that are used for measuring moisture in everyday life and in industries as well. Particularly in industries, moisture contents are measured indirectly by measuring the variation of some other physical property that is dependent on the moisture. For example, if we talk about some electrical methods, then the amount of microwaves that are absorbed by some object are directly related to its moisture contents. Therefore, microwaves are beamed through the object and it is noted that how much microwaves have been absorbed by the object. The amount of absorption is then directly related to the moisture contents present in that object. Another method measures the change in capacitance in specially formed capacitors whose dielectric is the material whose moisture is to be measured. The presence of moisture in the object will change the dielectric constant and hence the capacitance of the overall setup. Moreover, the electrical conductivity of certain material is directly related to the moisture content present in them. Therefore, by measuring the electrical conductivity or you can say the resistance of the materials can give us measure of moisture content present in that material. Another very highly accurate and expensive method for measuring moisture is called neutron moderation. This method uses a radioactive source and a neutron counter. The radiation coming out from the radioactive source are passed through the object whose moisture is to be measured. The fast moving neutrons in the radiation are slowed down by heavy hydrogen nuclei present in the water molecules. The slowing down of the neutrons form a cloud whose density is directly related to the moisture content present in the object. These devices are of course quite expensive, accurate and also dangerous to use. Therefore, strict safety precautions and regulations must be followed. Furthermore, if the object itself has hydrogen molecules in it, then this method cannot be used. Therefore, all organic objects are simply out of question. Moving on, an optical method for measuring the moisture content for liquids make use of the fact that the presence of water content in any liquid will change its refractive index. Therefore, refractometer, which is a well-established instrument for measuring the refractive index of the liquid is used to keep track of the refractive index and hence the moisture content present in the liquid. Moving on, we are well aware of the fact that the speed of sound in the air depends on a number of factors of which humidity is one. And if we extend this thing, then of course the amount of moisture present in any object will dictate the speed of sound through it. Using this fact, some methods pass ultrasonic sounds through the object whose moisture is to be measured and detecting the speed of the sound through the object can give us an idea of the amount of moisture present in that object. This method is inherently non-invasive and safe, but of course temperature compensation should be provided because the speed of the ultrasound depends highly on the temperature of the object as well. The last method that I'm going to discuss that is used for measuring the moisture contents, particularly in soil, measures the volumetric water contents in soil. One highly accurate but manual way is to perform direct gravimetric measurements of the soil. What we do is we remove the soil and take it to a lab where it is weighed, then dry it completely and weighed once again. The difference of the weight in these two readings will give us the weight of the water that was present in the soil. This method will give us amount of moisture present in unit mass of soil. But of course this method is slow and manual. A soil moisture sensor on the other hand looks like this and it measures the moisture of soil by using some other property of the soil. That can be electrical resistance, dielectric constant or any other property. One obvious issue with this kind of soil moisture sensor is that it has to be calibrated for the soil type for which it is to be used. In practice, reflected microwave radiations are recorded and used for measuring the moisture content of soil for hydrology and agriculture, whereas handheld instruments are also available for farmers and gardeners that can give a reasonably accurate measure of moisture content if calibrated properly. So dear learners, there are a number of methods and devices that can be used for measuring the moisture contents of a particular material. 
and I hope that you have understood the methodologies and working principles of these devices. So this was everything for this video. Thank you and take care.